Bear Bets is back. Thanksgiving week is here, so we got four games Thursday and Friday combined. I'm the Bear, Chris Flicka, your host. Jeff Schwartz is here. Have you played in a Thanksgiving Day game before? No, I have not. Um, I play a game on Thanksgiving until how much food can I eat till I pass out, though. That's a, that's a very good game, one yeah. that I am very experienced with as well. <laughs> uh, the, the, the goal will be to kind of separate myself from the family maybe yes. by about four o'clock in the afternoon sometimes yeah. sometime between appetizers and before dinner the main man yeah. I, I just I might need a little downtime from the family downtime um yeah it, it we're recording this on tuesday for obvious reasons because thanksgiving and the, the chiefs and the eagles game just ended last night it feels very early to talk NFL it does, already. <laughs> it like, does but, but it but it game's thursday but it also allows us how great was that game last night oh, like, fantastic. like the chiefs yeah we had the chiefs and, and they, they lost but like it felt like a big freaking game well the best part about the nfl and, and college football is obviously the scarcity of games make every game feel more important but then you have games like last night that feel like playoff games and the players and coaches and fans treat it like such. And so you get a mid-season playoff game. It's not an NBA mid-season tournament. I, it's a it's a it's a playoff atmosphere in a Super Bowl rematch. And I bear th- there was some hidden yesterday. Yep. There was some offensive defensive lines. There were big plays. Chiefs defensive but, line in the game was so but, good. And the Eagles off, offensive line doesn't look like that very often. No. And so um the Chiefs squandering their defensive performance this year is incredible. But look, the Chiefs can just flip a switch, I think, if anyone can catch a football. And they just can't do that right now. So uh, but we're we're hoping to catch some wins bear this week. What do you think about that? I I'm, yeah. I'm all for it. So winning uh, is good. Uh we're, we we talk about all the games in gambling group chat. Stay tuned for that. We cover them all. We go down the list. If you want some wagers for things, Sammy has a unique way. A friend of his is going to wager on those games yes. there. Um, but you have two games here that, that you're going to wager on. Let's start with the first one. It's an NFC South divisional matchup between rivals. The New Orleans Saints at the Atlanta Falcons. I it's a pickup. Teams too. New Orleans is five and five overall, but only two seven to one against the spread. Atlanta four and six. They've only covered two of their games. Both teams off a of bye in Atlanta with the quarterback change back to Desmond Ritter. Yeah, and who the hell knows what we're going to get from Desmond Ritter, but who knows what we're going to get from the Saints quarterback position too? Like, like his car cleared, but is is he going to play? Like, we're going to we going to get Jameis? Like, like what are we going to get from the from the uh, the Saints here? Look, I, I've been happy to bet against the Falcons most of the season, and I've been on the right side, fortunately, uh, most of the instances. But I mean, they play what six one score games, lost four of them. So you think maybe they are not as bad as their record. Uh, it seems to indicate the biggest issue is just some of the play calling and some of the way that Arthur Smith is just utilizing uh, the, these weapons and just supporting yeah. Desmond Ritter for as long as he can. But I, I just, I just, I'm not a believer in the saints uh, at all. So I, I took the saints in a pick them here um, against New Orleans. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's the wrong side. Maybe they should be favored on their home field against New yeah. Orleans, but uh, uh, prove me wrong, New Orleans. I never have a thought on the Falcons. I don't know what the Falcons are doing at all. And you, it, usually, like, the usually, like I am, like you're against, on my side. I am you're, you're against like, the Falcons like, at a, all costs. Like, Saints like, fan, like Dennis like, Allen, off like, of like everyone's charged. Like the Falcons are my Chargers. Like everyone, how everyone yeah. like laughs at the Chargers and wants no part of betting yes. the Chargers and makes fun of the Chargers. Like the, the, the Falcons are the Falcons are my Chargers. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. The, the Saints and and Allen and just, just they're just so mediocre, right? Like there's and if and if Arthur Smith decides to ever use his weapons like he should. The the Falcons should win this game. There's no doubt about it. Um, That's what I think. So uh, I'm with you there. Let's get to the the last game for now. Again, we'll get to gambling group chat and best bets later on. Cleveland Browns at Denver Broncos. Broncos favored by two and a half. The Browns are three and seven overall. Six, three and one against the spread. They just won and covered against the Steelers. The Broncos are five and five. Just won a close game. Of did not cover a win, but nope. did not cover. Very, very key two point conversion. Um, yeah, well, that the, the the two point conversion attempt. It felt like they they didn't want any of us to win our wagers. They had they had the Broncos. That was an atrocious attempt at two point. Well, I, I had the Vikings, so I had the, it worked out okay yeah. for me. There. I never beat you, man. It stinks. Who you got here? It's okay. I I was happy to bet against the Broncos again. Here, I took the Browns plus two and a half. Uh, the best unit on the field is the is the Cleveland defense, and people Absolutely. just continually. Like crap all over the Browns, and, and I get it. The quarterback play is ugly. I mean, TTR was fine. Maybe the mobility here uh, will help against the Denver defense, which has been 
up pretty good lately. Look, they, they've won a bunch of one score games. I, I know Denver has won uh, a bunch of one score games as well. Like, but I just, I have a ton of respect yeah. for the, for the Cleveland defense and, and getting points here. Uh, I, I think at some point the Broncos uh, hot air balloon of winning these games, like, like they did um, against the Vikings this week. And then the previous week as well. Um, I think it ultimately comes to an end. So I took a, uh, I took the Browns plus this. two and a half, and uh, everyone's took the money. I took the money line as well. Everyone's going to fade the Brown, the Brown, the Browns. Like, oh, DTR can't do this again, and he wasn't yeah. great, but he wasn't terrible. They can't do this again. The Broncos, look at them; they're getting hot Browns at the right are, time. Browns are undervalued. I love this so much, man. Thank because you. you get the better defense, you get Russell Wilson, who's improving, but not great. I mean, it's not, it's not like he's lighting up. He had a great throw. Don't get me wrong; that was a great touchdown pass in that game. But uh, everyone's going to be on the Broncos this weekend, and I'm, I'll, I, I think just in the backup quarterback thing, like the Bengals feel sort of juicy this week too. Like the backup quarterback, everyone's going to be on the Steelers this week. Quarter, coordinator change is going to change what they're what they're going to do. It's not. It's not at all. So. Um, all right, those are his two wagers, guys. He has the Falcons to pick him and the Browns plus two and a half. We have gambling group chat coming up next. We talk the Turkey Day games, talk the weekend games. Sammy has a play for Monday Night Football, and we talk about our Thanksgiving meals. The most important topic during Thanksgiving week is that it's going to be me, Sammy, Will, and Mr. Bear over here. Gambling group chat, here it is. Gambling group chat is back. Myself, Jeff, Sammy, and Will. Uh, I guess we just start with Thanksgiving. Uh, Lions uh, snatched one from the, uh, the the jaws of defeat uh, against the Bears last week. Somehow, all of those uh, wonderful teasers that teased the Lions down to, to two or whatever it was, two and a half, somehow won. Um, incredible luck there. Now you got the Packers coming in. Lions, I think, what, have lost like four straight Thanksgiving Day games, I think it is now. Not that that really matters, but for those who like to just bet the Lions on Thanksgiving, you haven't done well lately. Uh, Lions, seven and a half over uh, over Green Bay here. I guess two questions for, for you, Will. Number one is, do you have a thought on the game, number one? And number two, I know we've talked about Mike Tomlin, Kevin O'Connell, D'Amico Ryans for Coach of the Year. Is it time to maybe put a little Dan Campbell coach of the year in pocket just in case they do get that one seed or uh, because it's at some point that price is going to get a lot worse and at least to cover what maybe you've bet already on O'Connell and, and, and Ryan and Ryan's and Tomlin. Do you think, you think it might be a good idea right now? It's probably a good idea. I'm at the point where if Campbell wins it, you know what? I tip my cap and I'll just I'll lose my bets and I'll, I'll lose my bets and I'll, I'll move on to uh you know to the next market to the next bet. Um, I don't know that they're gonna get the one seed. That was a huge win for Philly in terms of securing the one seed because you talked about Philly in this tough schedule, this tough stretch of five six games. Well, guess what? They already clicked off a few of them. They beat Dallas. They won in Kansas City. Now the schedule. All right, there's a couple more tough ones left: Bills, 49ers, Cowboys. After that, it gets easy again. Two games against the Giants. So, look, I get Campbell's the rightful favorite. I still think. If if I had to make a bet at the current numbers, Tomlin 15 to one would be the play. If he can get that team into the playoffs, uh, because like we talked about Detroit was supposed to be good. They were minus money to win this division. It's not like this is some surprise team. So I get why he's the favorite. I just, I don't know that there's value there as far as this game Thursday. Uh, Detroit's a great teaser. Like it's seven and a half. He just teased down to the one and a half, just like he did last week where, Hey, you don't have to worry about them covering the spread. You win the game and you're in pretty good shape. Although it did take a two point conversion uh, to get you across the number. So, <laughs> I don't like laying seven and a half with a, a, a shaky defense, a shaky secondary a defense that's shown some warts, but that's going to be a raucous crowd on Thanksgiving. They always get up for these games, even though the last few years they haven't done well. Now they finally have a good team to get behind. You know, they, uh, they, they buried what green Bay what was it six weeks ago on that Thursday night. So now you get them in your building. Yeah, yep. I think Detroit's actually good for the number. I worry about a back door. If I had to take it or lay it, I would lay it, but I don't have to lay it. I could just tease it with something else. One of these dogs, that's one and a half point, uh, you know, underdogs, the, the Bengals, the, the, the saints or the Falcons, whoever the dogs there. So you got a bunch of options. Lions are great teaser. Like, well, Sammy rather, sorry. You both, you both, you both look alike. You both to have the uh, the same kind of outfit on today. You got the got the t shirt one one guy and Sammy Sammy. You got TV later today. I guess I'm guessing right. Little TV action Looking coming good. up. Uh, my buddy started a tradition a couple years ago where he just takes the dog on the money line in every game and just if he wins one he stops. 
And I, I, he wanted me to share the story. He said, he's got a bet on Green Bay three to one. No, I'm not saying that I like it, but he goes, look, if I don't hit that one, then I'll just bet the commanders. And I go, oh boy, this could be a really I bad like Thanksgiving it. too. <laughs> so, so he's going to come it's in out of the shoot. Like the, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the anti-bartender. It's, it's, I mean, look, I think one of these dogs is going to win, right? Uh, I, maybe. I think so. I mean, look, there's no it's way that all game. the favorites are going to win easily. Like, there's going to be a sweat in one yeah. of these games. And we'll get to the one that I like. I took one of these teams with the points that I already hate. And it's only Tuesday right now as we tape this. But, I, I mean, the market is speaking to the over. I mean, this opened 44 and a half. It's now 47 at a lot of shops. And Circle wrote it to 47 and a half. So a sharp group came in there that over 47 at Circa. That should tell you everything you need to know. I mean, 47 is one of those big key totals and there was no resistance. So this thing is going to probably keep climbing. If you have a 47, that's probably a good move. I, I still think the Packers can score points here, but I, I did want to bring up my buddy who's going to bet the Packers money line in the first game. If that doesn't hit, he's going football team. If that doesn't hit, he's going Gino and the boys at home. I'm rooting for him. We're seeing an incremental improvement each week in the Packers' offense, right, guys? Like we're like we're seeing enough that it's like okay, there's a little bit of improvement here. There's a little bit they're doing a little bit more. They got a little healthier, right? Obviously, Jones got hurt, but what was like they just it, it seems to be sort of clicking a little bit more offensively. And with the hook on that seven, I feel like a backdoor cover here is certainly possible. I, I don't have any thoughts on this game. I'll be frying my turkey at some point. I would imagine during this game that'll be my my sole focus on getting that juicy turkey. In that fryer, pull it out. It smells so good that that, that deep fried peanut oil there. Oh, you, you, God, see, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a deep fryer, son. Oh, it's the best. I I, I have an electric one too, so it's not, a, not. I don't have to get a big the the, the big propane fire going. Okay. So it's, the coils are in the are in the are in the oil, and so I'll be worried about making my turkey during this game. Oh, huh. I can't wait. I'll send you a picture. But please do. So so the, so the next game, if the if the uh, the Packers lose. We're going Commander's money line. Your Commander's knocked me out of my survivor pool. Same here. 47 people left. I'm little, I mean, nothing like six turnovers and <laughs> Tommy DeVito looking like a Pro Bowl quarterback there. So uh, hats off to the Giants. Um, you knocked me out. Sammy, uh, you, you, you may, okay. So if, if it wasn't the Washington that you bet that you hated right now, there's only one other option for the day. So what was it? Was it the Commander's plus the 11? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I took it right away. Right away, I took it. And I, I hate it. I absolutely despise this wager. <laughs> but look, sometimes you, you got to take the right number. And I, you know, this open, the look ahead was like nine. So now we're through the 10. We're at 11. I'm not going to just wax poetic about how I think Washington's going to care in this game. And the effort is real. To me, it's the number. You know, I mean, a lot of guys don't bet teams. They bet numbers. And I, I feel like anything north of 10 is a little too high. If Sam Howell can throw the ball with success down the field, which he's been able to do in a lot of games this year. I mean, look, we're not laying points with Washington. Washington goes from a nine-point favorite to an 11-point dog in the matter of four days. To me, it's just an overreaction. We talked about it on the college pot. I think it's too many points for Oregon State against Oregon, and I think this is too many points. I will look like a total idiot when Dallas is up 17-3 to three at half, but I'm I'm going down with it. I, I took 11. I think it's the right numerical bet. I mean, he's My certainly inflated. Is, is more, yeah. Go ahead, no, I was just going to say, Dallas Dallas blows out these bad teams. You say, oh, Dallas, Carolina, that number's inflated at 10 and a half, 11. Yeah, it's not inflated when it's like a 30 point game. So I don't know. It's interesting because these are standalone games. You get a lot of recreational money. So I'd be interested if you get an even better number on Washington. People just, hey, they're, you know, they're, they're having Thanksgiving dinner, they're having a few drinks. Oh, Dallas is coming on. Let me fire in some Dallas bets and you get this up to 11, 11 and a half, 12. Not that 12 is a key number, but be interesting to see where this, this number goes here. Yeah. And, and you, and you, you have, Four, I think the four biggest favorites of the week, all playing on. Well, no, I'm the, the Chiefs are nine in, in in Vegas, but like, like, how many people are just going to money line all the favorites on Thursday and Friday? They're thinking that it's look. Will said it, the Cowboys continue to blow up bad football teams, and Washington is 
is not but the Panthers, but they don't have a lot going for them right now. Um, I just think that, again, the, the Cowboys' recipe when they get ahead is rushing the passer, right? It's what's what their defense does well. And we don't blame, obviously, four interceptions and whatnot, but it, the commander's offensive line let the, let Sam Howell get hit a bunch this past week. And I know there'll be some pride in come, kind of coming back, but again, if the Cowboys get up and we saw the commanders take their two best pass rushers and ship them away, like, I, I don't see it, the path unless Sam Howell is out of his mind um, to keep this game close. I'm not, I'm not taking a wager in this game. So good luck. I, I wish Sammy the best of luck here, but this could get out of hand pretty quickly. If the Cowboys continue to play like they have against a lot of these bad football teams and you know, the Washington's care level in this game, I think it's very clear that the coach Rivera won't be, will, 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 will not be back next season. Uh, it's a short week. You're on the road Thanksgiving. I, I just don't know how much they're going to, they're going to want this game. The, 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 the night game, like I know, the number is the, the, the number is begging you to take San Francisco laying six and a half in Seattle. And usually I hate lines that, that look like this, where it looks like it's total one side action. I don't think the Seahawks are very good at all. But no Walker. Uh, I know the 49ers have some injuries as well, but they, we kind of talked about it a couple of weeks ago before they went to Jacksonville. Like they've looked great since coming back from the, from the, from the, the bye week. Oh, and and awesome. now I think that front could give that terrible Seahawks offensive line a lot of problems. Gino was hurt. Like, I don't know. I, I still might lay the six and a half here. Will. I think your old buddy, Scott Van Pelt used to always say, or he still, still says, how good is your good And San Francisco's good is, is as good as anybody. Probably the best. Um, I, I think, look, San Francisco's going to be a popular teaser leg. I think the total's a little high. I don't know how many points you're getting with Seattle here. I actually played Seattle plus two thirty to miss the playoffs. If you look at their schedule, and I know the NFC's bad, so they'll mm. probably find a way in, but they're what six and four, their next four games, San Francisco, at Dallas, at San Francisco, then the Eagles. How many wins are they getting yeah. in that stretch? Huh. Uh, and then at the Titans, they finish One, at Arizona, maybe. which all of a sudden, uh, at Arizona is their final game. All of a sudden, that's not the easiest mm. game in the world. There's there's a possibility where they're a month from now, hey, they're six and eight, and you got a great number there at plus two thirty. Mm. See, I, I guess the 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 question there is, and I love the concept, and I love the idea. I Who takes guess their spot? You're banking. You're banking on the Rams, I guess, this right. team that maybe would take their spot with the Holly Stafford and Cup eventually coming back and Kyron Williams coming back, I guess. Would, would that be who, you, who you'd think of Rams? I, Rams got Cardinals, Cardinals, Browns, Commodes, Saints, Giants. Like that could potentially be one, two, three. Our favorite Falcons four. team, maybe. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, geez. Absolutely. No. <sighs> Here's the thing: if you're like, six and eight and you not, only finish seven and ten, eight and nine, like eight and nine's probably my bet is if they finish eight and nine, they're probably not going to get in. It's just hey, I, I don't have to figure out who's going to take their spot. If they lose four in a row, I got a good bet. That's that's sort of the thinking here. Eight, eight, eight and nine looks like the favored scenario for the Rams, and, and who knows about that game with, for the 49ers and on the last week of the year? Maybe the Niners have nothing to play for. Maybe they can't catch the Eagles for home field. Or the Lions for home field, and, and the Niners like won't care about that game, and maybe they're bringing Trey Lance back to play or something. Who, who, who the hell knows? But uh, huh? You, you, you've made me think now. Now after I fired in my whales live uh, bet that I forgot to bet earlier, I had to lay a bigger number. I had to lay one eighty now on the win. Whales up one nil on Turkey. I wanted to bet it beforehand, but I forgot. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to jump in here on the uh, on the sea bags to miss the playoff. Sammy, you like a. Uh, you like that thought there on uh, on the sea bags or anything on that game? Sea bags is is a fascinating nickname. I I do love that. Um, <laughs> I'm under forty three and a half. I believe, I believe it's I, I believe it's a Chris Bur I believe it's a Chris Berman. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the, uh, the the good old days of uh, NFL primetime, back when they were really really atrocious. The sea bags. Bags. So I think obviously there's going to be a big appetite for San Francisco here. You look at the last two games. They pounded Jacksonville. Brock Purdy pitched a perfect game in the last game, basically. And this thing opened four. Now we're six, six and a half. I would probably take a little seven. God, here I am. I'm the guy looking at all the dogs on Thanksgiving. I hate myself. Um, I do like under, though. <laughs> I did bet under 43 and a half. I do have that. Look, the thing about Seattle is you usually get a decent pass rush, and we know how good San Francisco is. I think the one question is, do we know the health of Geno? I know that Pete Carroll is saying all the right things, 
But as somebody who held a Rams ticket last week and got super lucky to win that, when Drew Locke was in, that brought the game closer to the middle. You know what I mean? If, if Gino yes. doesn't get hurt, I don't win that bet. So it's tough to get involved without knowing. Like, you know, we don't have to bet these on Tuesday or Wednesday, especially when we have quarterback stuff. Wait for Gino. If he's in, I might take seven. If he's out, though, I love the under 43 and a half even more. Can you imagine if we get Drew Locke? How much does he score against the Niners? Forget it. <laughs> Pick six, pick pick six possibilities. I think would be the uh, the only the only the only reason for for touchdowns on the Seattle when Seattle has the ball. Uh, that's for sure. The Friday game obviously is gone up from what seven and a half to ten. But like, I don't know like why there's been this massive move. Like, <laughs> is Tim Boyle really worth like like is, is he that much worse than Zach? Zach Wilson's terrible. And we knew he was terrible for three years when when, when they drafted yeah. him, and now everybody's seeing the light of day. But like, I don't. I would almost be more inclined, Will, to take the Jets oh. now with Tim oh. Boyle plus ten than I would have had I known it was Zach Wilson. Can we hang on? Can we pause the pot for a moment while I go throw up somewhere? You're going to take the ten with the Jets. Oh my God! There's better ways to spend your weekend, <laughs> I guess. I'm so confused though. Zach well, Wilson. I'm not saying I'm going to, but I, I would. Like I, that's, I get that's it. the side I would play if I had to play it. Zach Wilson's not starting this week. I'm so confused because Robert Sala kept telling me, kept telling all of us that that Wilson was playing so well, and now he's not starting. I don't get the disconnect. He's played so well recently, according to the coach. I know, and yeah. he's third string um, now too, right? It doesn't make sense. Uh, how about an under here? I think maybe we, like we talked about on the college pod with Iowa, sometimes we talk around these things and we're just, it's so close to us. We, we miss what's obvious where the Jets have a pretty good defense and they can't score. They've played five unders in a row. They're an under team. Maybe we just play the under here. Sammy, you, you, you like I the Black I'm Friday so, dog? I hope I'm so drunk and hung over <laughs> that I can't bet this game. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I have no interest I want to wake up Friday morning, make the leftover sandwich with the cranberry sauce and the turkey and the stuffing, and maybe start drinking again on Friday so I don't have to like be awake for this game. That's how excited I am for Jets Dolphins. Sorry. Are you excited for Jeff Dolphins? Uh, no, I have a wager on it. it. It might, it may or may not be in my best bets. I will tell you though, when, since Jalen Ramsey has been back for the Dolphins, their defense has gone much better. They've allowed 17, 14, and 13 in the three weeks since, since he's been back. So something to note if you're looking at, at the Dolphins right now is that their defense was not as good as we thought early on with, with uh, Fangio there. Ramsey comes back all of a sudden, obviously helps your defense to have a number one corner there. He's getting a lot of turnovers. He's playing very well. And the defense sort of has changed now. So kind of throw out. I think the first the first month of the season for them defensively. Now look what they are with with Ramsey. And, and look, one of those games was was Kansas City. I know the Raiders aren't great, so you know take that with a grain of salt. But you know they only allowed 14 points to uh, to the Chiefs, which is not not hard right now. But the defense is much better with Jalen Ramsey. Will I want to get back to what we were just talking about before because you really. Really, really struck a go. Like I, I love your your thought process That's there. Funny Seattle. Well, here here we go. I have Where Seattle. Seattle to miss the playoffs at plus one eighty. However, oh, it moves. Like, we talked about who would the team be? The Rams. The Rams are plus four ninety to make the playoffs. So, like, is it worth wow. maybe playing the it's getting trying to narrow it down a lot and playing the Rams as that team maybe to make the playoffs and upend Seattle? Hmm? That's not a bad way to play. You do worry watching the Rams. It seems like Stafford gets the hell beaten out of him. There's like three or four plays a game. Yes, they're like, oh, he's not getting, up. he's not getting up. He's not going back in the game. He broke this. He got hit again. So that's the concern with that. But definitely a, a way to uh, approach it. It was. I didn't mean to give out a stale number. It was plus two thirty uh, this morning or late last night. So I'm sure people kind of saw what what we're we're seeing here with. Hey, the schedule's mm -hmm. tough for the next month or so. But so so that number uh, moved a little bit based off of that. And who knows the injury with Geno as well. Look, look into uh, the weekend. Um, interesting. Jacksonville playing a playing one and a half here in Houston. Houston suddenly. Uh, is Houston really a threat here, Jeff, to win this division? I don't know. I was on the Cardinals last weekend. We talked about this game, and I, I thought Houston was going to lose this game. I think the Cardinals did more to lose this game than Houston did to win this game. But um, I, Jacksonville – the way they played this past weekend is the way that people expect them to play, right, Bear? And if they play like this, they're going to beat the Texans. They're going to win the division. 
The problem with Jacksonville is they have been too shaky, right? They have not been as consistent as you would like to see them play. So I think it's hard to wager on them right now, not knowing what you're getting from them. If you get what we got on Sunday, they're the division winner. Houston is a good story. They're not as talented as Jacksonville, right? Like they're, they're just certainly not. Stroud's playing well, but he did throw a couple of bad interceptions. I, I, I would like to take Jacksonville here, but I don't know if they're trustworthy because if I don't know what I'm getting from them each week. Man, and I, I, I totally agree. And that's why I was kind of against them last week when I took the Titans plus the seven, and that one never had a chance. Um, Sammy, anything on uh, Houston, Jacksonville? I just want to give you a couple numbers here. I, I lean to the home team, but it's nothing that I love. I think we're all friendly with uh, the doctor, Eric Eager. He works at Sumer Sports, mm -hmm. and they are very big on EPA. Expected points added per play, per pass, per rush. The Houston Texans in EPA per play on offense are 10th in the NFL. The Jacksonville Jaguars are 21st. So that speaks to the inconsistency of their offense. How about this number, though? This is EPA per pass. The Texans are number four. The Jaguars are number 19. If you would have told me in August that the Houston Texans would have a better passing attack than Jacksonville, I I would have thought you were like in a straitjacket. Like who, who yeah. thought that was even possible this year? And that speaks to the growth of Houston. I'm not saying they're a lock to win this weekend, but like, have, have we ever remembered a team that picked, you know, at the top of the draft to turn it around this quickly? It's a testament to their coach. It's a testament to them taking the right quarterback, clearly, who fell into their laps. And number two, their defense gets pressure. This team is playing very good football right now. And I don't think that laying one with Jacksonville is just very simple. I think, you know, I feel like the bartender is going to take Jacksonville this week. It's very bartender. No, oh, Trevor Lawrence yes, minus yes one. It, is. It, it feels not to guess what he's going to take, but that's a long way of me saying, like, I am very impressed with how good Houston has been to this point, especially on offense, which I don't think anybody saw coming. No, not at all. You, you, you That's a great note about what you had about the EPA. The other one that I heard this morning, I think it was uh, on, on Follow the Money when I, when I was home. The Cleveland Browns have scored more points this year than the Kansas City Chiefs. That's correct. Which is amazing. Wow. Like, like that one, I was like, wow. And I guess it kind of adds up being that the Chiefs have really struggled uh, in, in the second half of games. And we saw that last last night again, just getting shut out. Uh, you would not expect, like, I would, I would expect, like, the Chiefs to be a no sweat. Like, if you're, if you're looking to throw some stuff in a money line, like the Chiefs kind of feel like a free leg. They, they're not losing to the Raiders, are they? They're not They're not losing the Raiders, but I've come on here on this platform, other platforms, and said, don't worry about the Chiefs offense, guys. They're going to figure it out. Because, you know, last season was sort of the same thing with Tyreek Hill being gone. Like, are they going to figure it out? It feels like they're not going to figure out, right? Like, they don't have a wide receiver that Patrick Mahomes trust on third down and throw the ball to. He's throwing guys that are open, obviously. He's throwing to certain guys, but they can't catch the football. Um, and they're still missing that guy. I thought it's Rashid Rice. Maybe it is at some point, but we keep telling ourselves, at least I keep saying, hey, guys, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. I promise. Like, we've seen this before. It's going to get better. They came off a bye, and it got no better, right? How many drops last night? Six drops last night. The the the, the bad the bad interception, which is a great play by the Eagles' safety, and then also you know, the, 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 the Kelsey fumble, like, the penalties, they're just not playing good football around. Defensively, fantastic. They've lost three games this year. 21 points the the uh the Lions scored, only 14 in offense. 21 points Eagles scored and 23 the Broncos. Those are three scores. You expect the Chiefs to win. They're they're not playing well on offense right now, guys. I, I don't think you can expect them to turn on anytime soon. This is what their offense will be the rest of the season. Now they're good. They're gonna win a lot of football games. They might still have the one seed because they're a good football team. But to count any wide receiver each week, I, I think is just the wrong way to play this team. Still Mahomes and still well, good Sammy. defense. So you no, I was just gonna say it, it's hard to just pound your fist and be like, this team can't win the Super Bowl. They have Mahomes, they have Andy Reid, they have a good defense, they have Kelsey, but they it does seem like they've cut it a little close where hey, 
we'll give Mahomes Kelsey a good D and he'll figure out the rest. It, it, you might have cut it a little too close where you got to give more more skill, more explosiveness. It reminds me, I don't know if you guys remember this, 2006, uh, 2006 the Patriots had a team like this. I think it was Rache Caldwell and Troy Brown were their two best receivers and Brady would t- sort of piece together. And they got far. They got to the AFC title game. I think it was the year they lost to the Colts, but it wasn't good enough. And the next year they went out and they got Randy Moss and Wes Welker. Sometimes, you know what, you need this position is interchangeable, but you need something. And, and it seems like they just – they. They didn't put enough invested into this position. You figure at the trade deadline, like th- th- there's enough guys out there. I don't know if Tampa would have traded you. Mike Evans, uh, Adams within the division uh, probably wasn't a, a, a solution. But you figure there was something more than what they have now to just go improve this roster. Look, I, I think we give all the credit in the world. I know it's easy to drag Kansas City today. We give all the credit in the world to Philly, though. And shout out to Chelsea, who I believe is our executive producer. I don't have the title, but I'm, I'm going to call her the executive producer. She has Hertz MVP. She has Eagles to win the East. I think she's got some other crazy Eagles bet. I mean, she is an Eagles fan, but sounds like a, a lot solid. of homerism right there. Jalen, hey, doesn't Jaylen matter. For... Doesn't matter. Listen to this though. I'll take it. The Chiefs the still outgained the Chiefs outgained the Eagles by a hundred yards. Amazing. They had seven more first downs. They had the ball more. They did everything right. And the Chiefs still held the Eagles to 14 points for three quarters. So they're going to be in every game. I'm not as pessimistic as a lot of these people are. Yes, they have to catch the damn football. But as good as this Eagles offense can be, they couldn't move the ball until the fourth quarter. So let's just hope some of these guys catch these balls later in the season. I'm not too phased. I still have them to win the AFC, and I've got them 5-6-1 to win the Super Bowl. I'm not going to jump off the ship now because some guy dropped a wide open touchdown. Like there are concerns, but their defense, this is the best time in the Mahomes era where the defense has been better than the offense. And that's hard to do. They're a top five defense in the league right now in Kansas city. Yep. Yeah. I, I think just like we, you talked about last week, adding some chiefs to the portfolio after that loss on Monday night, today's probably a good time to maybe add a little bit more because Who's going to beat them in the AFC? I, I'm fired up because Big Cat dropped his power rankings. The computer spat it out this morning, and we got a matchup of ass Iowa with the Giants <laughs> against super ass with the Patriots. And we all win with that matchup. I love the Patriots in this game. I'll get into all the reasons why later, but like we cannot expect the Giants to be beneficiaries of a, a of a plus six turnover margin this week again. Can't like. I know the Patriots are terrible. They're awful, and we don't know who's going to start a quarterback right now, but this is still the New York football Giants. Jeff. It is, but I'm not betting on the Patriots anymore this season. I just, I've done it. They've, they've lost every game. I've wagered on them. I don't trust them. We don't know who's playing quarterback. Yeah, this is the fate of the Giants, right? I mean, you're just fading Tommy DeVito doing this two weeks in a row, basically, and the plus six turnover margin. So I, I don't know, Will. I, I can't bet the Patriots. I just can't do it. They're on my no wager list this year. I try not to think of, hey, I can't bet on this team. There's always a number, but I don't know if it starts with a minus and ends with a three and a half. I'm not laying a field goal plus the <laughs> hook. You might be laying three and a half with Malik Cunningham. I, I get you don't want any part of the Giants, and it would behoove the Giants to lose. It would really benefit both these teams to lose, although I, I like like we've seen these teams don't think that way. These coaches and players don't think that way. Uh, it's more the fans, but... Oh boy, what's what's a Giants team total on this? This might be one where you just you play a Giants team total under 14, and you figure a Belichick and defense... And yeah, DeVito actually looked okay at times last last week. I think that would be the better way I play it, where I just play a Giants team total under, and I don't really care who wins. I'll just check the score at the end, and hopefully they don't crack the two-touchdown barrier. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the best way to take this game in. Sammy, any thoughts on uh, Giants-Patriots? Maybe uh, both team totals under. Uh, New England, 18 and a half <laughs> under minus 20. I'd probably do that too. I mean, you could sell me on both. The total in this game is 33 and a half. I mean, it's not rocket science. Both of these offenses are horrible. Bill probably does figure out Tommy DeVito. And you have to remember the Patriots are <laughs> off the bye week too. So Bill has had two weeks to prepare for Mr. Chicken Cutlet. I, I don't think that's good. Um, I God, what a bad football game. Sammy, who do you what think is playing quarterback? You, you're, you're locked into that area. Who do you think is playing quarterback for, for New England? I think it's going to be Zappy. Oh, wow. Okay. The, the, the other game that I thought the bartender might – did you have something here? You, no, no. You, 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 I thought you were 
I thought you were uh, I'm looking at other okay. games numbers. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I thought the bartender might be on Denver. That was another one that I thought might be in his wheelhouse. DTR going on the road, uh, Browns after that performance in Denver, and and Russell Wilson. They're they're so hot right now. I thought Sammy. I thought Denver minus the two. Two and a half might be another one that the bartender might uh, sink his teeth into. I see. I thought he was going to go, and again, not to turn this into my content, I thought he was going to go Jacksonville, and then I thought he was going to lay three and a half with Baltimore on Sunday night against the Chargers, who continuously, boys and girls, are either up (laughs) or down three with two minutes to go. Or both at the same time. I texted texted all of you guys on Sunday. I'm like, hey. Go to go to red zone. Herbert's got the ball. They're down three. There's 45 <laughs> seconds to go. And look, I feel like this is a game where the Chargers are going to be up late and maybe up four, and then Baltimore scores that late touchdown to win by three and not cover the three and a half. I thought he was going to come Baltimore, but that Cleveland-Denver game, I mean – God, there are some bad football teams right now. I mean, Cleveland, <laughs> that, well, bad, bad offenses. I mean, let's say because Cleveland has an exceptional defense, and Denver's defense yes. has gotten a lot better uh, in the last month. I mean, guys, we're talking totals of 35, 34 and a half, 36 and a half, 33. And that's where we're at in 2023. Just bad offense, backup quarterbacks, and some teams have both. We talked coach of the year earlier. Is is Stefanski coach of the year viable? Like if they get to the playoffs with DTR, PJ Walker, and whatever Deshaun Watson was a quarterback this season, that's a that's a I mean, Miles Garrett MVP. I know there's talk about that this week. That feels unlikely, but he might be the best player in the NFL at the moment, the way he's playing. Because I mean, there's not a quarterback right now right. who's the best player in the NFL. Like there's not, I mean, there's good quarterbacks, obviously, but not someone you're like, even last night when Hurts threw and Mahomes both threw for under 200 yards, maybe Mahomes was over at the end, by mm-hmm. the end of the game. Like, I, I would think that Stefanski to win coach of the year, if they win, what, they're seven? Let me get this right. They're seven and three right now. Are they going to win? They get the 10 and 10 and seven playoff spot. He's he's winning coach of the year, right? If with DTR being his quarterback. I can't look at the uh, awards odds in this ridiculous state here, unfortunately. You're in the ballpark. In New York. You're in the ballpark, though. The only problem is he won this award, what, three years ago, four years ago? They generally don't give this guy the the award to the same person like twice in a three- or four-year span. That would be my concern. Yeah. And there are a lot of good candidates. So, yeah, I'm looking at 28-1 to on DraftKings. That would keep me off it. By the way, anyone who wants to bet Miles Garrett MVP, just my DMs are open. Hit me up. I'll be happy to book those for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, however, we would like to see Miles Garrett win Defensive Player of the Year because yes. we got some some good numbers Look, on him from earlier. J.J. Year. Watt six years ago had like the best defensive year of all time. He had a bazillion sacks, TFLs, interceptions, touchdowns. And that was the year to, for, it was a down year for quarterbacks. It was, that was the year for anyone to, for basically a non-quarterback, not non-quarterback, but a defensive player to win the award, like an untraditional player to win the award. And he wasn't even close. So like, if he's not going to do it in that season, Miles Garrett's not going to get it this year. Jeff is actually offering people out there, the book, the book of Schwartz, uh, 2 million to one, on a uh, CJ Stroud one, Miles Garrett two, uh, MVP exact to finish uh, <laughs> parlay. So uh, the, the, Jeff's offering you two million. Be- I mean, yes. Speaking yeah. of MVP, yeah. on that. Jeff's not going to like this. Jeff's going to get mad at me, but we talked about it like, what, six weeks ago? I don't think it's dead. I kind of counted it as like a loss. I don't know what Purdy, 18 to 1 MVP. I, I don't know if you can write that ticket off now. He's bounced back. You can explain the three losses. Hey, it was a bump in the road. He had a concussion. Um, he's played well again. If they get to 14 and three, if he has a big game against the Eagles, like you said, none of these other quarterbacks have pulled away. I'm not saying he's the best player in the league. We know he's not, but he's a good player. He's on a good team. I don't know. Can, can he win that award? What? What what is the what is the MVP list for the last 15 years? Is there even someone remotely close to Brock Purdy? On that list, like I, 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 I think that he, look, you you make a great point though. They go fourteen and three or thirteen and four, and they unseat the Eagles as the one seed. Then there's certainly a he's be in the conversation. He'll he'll be in the top five because they, they you know they they tier vote now, right? They used to just vote for one player. Now it's one, two, three, right. four, five. So he'll be in the conversation. I hundred percent agree with you there. But like. He's playing good football. Don't get me wrong. He had a perfect passer rating now, two straight weeks, like first time since 1950 that's happened. I'm, I'm not discounting how he's playing. I'm just saying that like the MVP list is 
Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. Cam Newton. Uh, there's a Cam Newton in his 2015 his special year. Matt Ryan won it. It's a, a great year. He made the Super Bowl. I mean, so maybe Brock Purdy sneaks in there. I mean, it feels Matt Ryan-esque, I, I, I think, right, from 2016. That was the year that he was the MVP. Like, it's certainly possible you go 14 and three, 13 and four, um, and, and you're in the MVP conversation. And then there's Tyreek Hill. I love that one still. He's not going to get it though. Cause they, they won't be the one seed. Chime in bear. Am yeah, I dead they, with that have... Brock Purdy ticket or no? I don't think, I don't think you're dead I because think I think they're, I think all these guys are maybe not. They're the same player, even though they're not the same player. I guess they're the same candidate, even though they're not the same player. Like, like they're all the same. So I don't think you are dead. I, I, I don't I don't I don't think you're dead at all uh, in, in that. A lot of voters like game. EPA too. He's number one in EPA by a significant margin. So I, I think he's live. I really do. I think he's live. Dak's starting to get some momentum too. I would think they would need to win the division for Dak to get it, but it's really wide open. Probably. So I'm not betting any of these guys two to one, three to one right now. Though anyone you're betting anyone under five to one right now, I think you're making a bad bet. Any other uh, any other games you want you want to get into here? I mean, I mean we haven't we haven't hit on Pittsburgh Cincinnati with Matt Canada uh, firing and Jake Monday Brown night do over. Monday yeah. night Monday night Sammy interesting two seventy three two seventy four the Vikings minus three and a half total forty three against the Bears who gave one away and we were we were going back and forth on the on the text thread on Sunday like. Oh God, our Bears unders are dead right now. <laughs> and then uh, the Bears did Bears things and blew that game. So we're uh, we're still alive there. Three and a half north of a field goal. Feels like the Bears might be a little bit of a trendy dog here, though, Sammy. I'm just taking the over. We talked about this last week. When Justin Fields is healthy, this team is different because they can score quickly. They get those quick touchdowns, those like three minute drives, those explosive runs, you know, the 40 yard runs for fields, followed by the 30 yard pass to DJ Moore or whoever. Justin Fields, I said this last week, I actually was a little bit low. 68 percent of his starts the last two years have gone over the total. Not a big sample size, of course. But look, Dobbs is going to be able to have the broken place, too, because the Bears can't tackle. And I think we all saw, like, how are they not in cover two with a 12-point lead in the fourth quarter? They just – they are so poorly coached on defense, and they turn into flubber at the end of these games. No lead is safe. In a perfect world, Chicago scores first, sets the tempo. I'm over 43, guys. Bears 8-3 and three to the over this year, and a couple of those unders are with Tyson Bajan. So they they just score, and they give up points when Fields is in the game because he's he's pretty erratic. He could fumble. He could throw a pick. He just leads to points on both sides. But, Sammy, primetime unders, man. Are you going to go against the, the trend of primetime yeah, unders? Yeah, How I dare am. you, Sammy? Yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> how the hell? I'm doing it again. Last, last, how the hell did that Bills game stay under last week? And, and then the, the Sunday night game between the – how the hell that stay under? Like, it was – like, you talk – Last night was six, under too, right? Last field goal, yeah. Last night was under as well. Yeah, well, two reds on Yeah, but we, but Will and I had the prime time over on Thursday, and that thing flew over. No, you're I'm, correct. I took it too. That was I made some money. Thank you guys. We're we're we're, we're just gonna, saying gonna, not gonna, every gonna under in prime time hit. <laughs> no, with the, no, with the prime I, time you, under, you don't. You don't leave. No, like you watch these games and you you try to figure out how they stay under. I don't know if you guys remember the movie. I think it was Angels in the Outfield where there's like exterior forces helping the ball go a certain way. It feels like that with these unders where, man, you get in the red zone, you fumble or somebody drops a pass. It's like there's some extra force at nature, uh, force of nature here um, that that's helping these games stay under. It's just it's amazing. If you're betting the over, you're just pulling your hair out, like with the drops, the turnovers, you name it. They're just finding different ways for these games to stay under. The Broncos also kicked four field goals inside the red zone. Yep. Correct, which, which which is the thing. Falcon Saints, who wants to jump in with me on the on the Falcons here to pick them? Nope. Need eight and a half over, Saints. so I I'm rooting for you, buddy. Yeah, and I have, I think, do I have eight and a half under or nine and a half under? I can't remember what what the best number. You have I nine and a half the, uh, under. Do I? I thought you middled it, where you're like you're under nine and a half, and then you're over. Yeah, eight I. And I, a half. I yeah, I don't. I don't have an over. I don't have an over on the Falcons. I just have an under. So I, I can't remember if that was an eight and a half or a nine. I'll have to. I'll have to. 
I'll have to look and, and, and find that. A, a, the big game all of a sudden here, and, and one that I think we should get into, Chelsea will get really mad at us. But what was that Eagles-Bills uh, game on Sunday afternoon? Like the Bills, everything kind of went right for them this week. They blew out the Jets. Watson is injured, even though I think Watson, I think the Browns are going to make the playoffs. But uh, the Burrow injury, like, like they got teams to lose. The Chargers lost, so that kind of knocks it. Like they got teams to lose. Steelers lost that, that they needed to lose. And like if they can win this week, like their playoff hopes might still kind of be alive, Jeff. Absolutely. I think with we talked about Jacksonville, like how trustworthy is this offense? Some games good, some games bad. When the Bills are on, they're fantastic. When they're not on, they're terrible. Like that, you you can't trust them to be the same teammate. The variance. This is why this is a Bills thing for years under Josh Allen. Like their variance, what we, they're just a roller coaster each and every week. So they're hard to wager because again, if you get the good Bills, then you're going to get a great performance this weekend. The bad Bills. I know the Eagles are off a short week and 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 a very physical Chiefs game going back home. But like, I, I, Sammy, which Bills team are we getting? The good Bills or the bad Bills? It's impossible to know, but how about this? The Bills were not underdogs in a single game last year, and they've been an underdog one time this year. So we have to have that conversation, oh. too, because usually when you're betting Buffalo, you're laying not only a number, but a substantial number. You're laying three and a half, or you're laying six, or when you play one of the lights, you're you're laying nine or ten or eleven. So to get three and a half with them almost feels like it's just not real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because in the last two it's, football seasons, they've been catching points once. That has to count for something, right? And I look, I still I still think the Eagles are are right there with San Francisco. Like, you know, San Francisco I have a little bit higher in a power rating, but the Eagles did not really impress me for three quarters last night. So I I'd probably take three and a half. Buffalo money line is pretty nice too. I mean, you could get like plus one hundred and fifty, maybe plus one hundred and sixty. I don't hate that. Two things, yeah, I, I guess, on that. Number one would be in terms in terms of Buffalo. Like, does that maybe mean maybe the power ratings? Maybe everybody has it wrong with the Bills that they're always a favorite, and and just is is the number is the market just wrong with them? And then I get it with the with the Niners and the Eagles, but. Would the fact that that NFC Championship game could be again played in Philly, like, would that maybe kind of skew you towards betting the Eagles uh, to, to win the NFC? Will it feels like you're jumping in late? I just think this is this game in particular. I like the Bills. I think this is a tough spot for Philly. You know, huge game against Dallas. They pull it out last second. Huge game on the road. Super Bowl revenge. Uh, against the Chiefs, they pull it out. You're, you're using a lot of emotion, and now you're going, uh, uh, you know, short week, um, a, a, another big game. How many times can you dial it up to ten? Where the Bills, hey, they're playing for their season now. Philly may be a little satisfied, like, all right, we got through part of our schedule here, the the tough part of our schedule. Or Buffalo, this is it for them. Every game is basically a playoff game, so there's a motivation edge, there's a situational edge. I think with Buffalo, I don't look at these spots too much, but you're getting points on top of it. So to me, this is a good spot for Buffalo and. You know, in terms of Philly as a future, they're minus 250, I think, to have the one seed. They play San Fran in a few weeks. Um, I, I still think San Fran's a better team, so I wouldn't jump in on a short number just because I think, and I want to see this game, to be honest, because we got short change last year, 49ers, Eagles. We didn't get a fair fight. Yep. The quarterback got knocked out. The, the backup got knocked out. I actually, just at, like bets aside, I would love to see this game and see a fair fight and see who, who actually wins. I know we'll see it in the regular season here in a couple weeks, but I, I would just like to see this game, you know, a, a rematch from last year. Jeff? I just can't bet on the Bills with their court with their offensive situation right now. It's just it's it just I, I I need to see something I can trust each week. But I will tell you though that the Eagles that was a physical violent game last night. Yeah. It was great. And they're on a short week. It was it the NFL's king because of those games. Like middle of the regular season playoff atmosphere, right? Like it was a legit fucking playoff game. And on a short week, can you recover fast enough? And the Bills kind of played a ho hum game where they didn't have to, you know, they didn't have to go as hard as the Eagles. That's my only concern about taking the Eagles here. Is that like the physicality of the Chiefs game on a short week? I think we kind of ripped through everything. Yeah. I think 
We, anything else out there that you guys want to get off your chest or get out, get out there? Yeah, we we spent way too much time on football. I want to know what's on the menu. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve, Jeff, Bear, you guys, I don't know if people know this, but you guys can cook. You guys can definitely eat. Like, what are you guys eating? What's on the menu the, the next few days, Thanksgiving? We, 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 I, we, that was a kind way of saying we're overweight. Oh, you, yeah, you, guys, was, you guys can eat. Yeah. Hey, I'm not, I'm no, we, not, we not got too far behind you there. Yeah, we, 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 got, we, got, we got the usual turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, the candy yams, uh, green bean, not, not green bean casserole. We, we do roasted green beans uh, in the oven with a little olive oil and salt and pepper and some garlic. Uh, we got like a corn casserole uh, that, that we got going on, fresh cranberry, cr- fresh cranberry sauce. And my wife actually is boiling. She just sent a picture right now that she's boiling the cranberries down to prove that she's actually doing something and not sleeping in the <laughs> middle of the afternoon. Wow. Um, it was aggressive. We, we got uh we got a very aggressive. Yeah. Sorry, she can take it. Um we got we got apple pie, uh pumpkin pie, which I'm not a fan of. I know that that's like a if people love pumpkin pie. I'm not a pumpkin pie fan. We got a blueberry pie. So just just the usual traditional stuff there is is what we have. We we don't get anything out of the ordinary here. And do you have guests coming over? Yes, my Okay, good. My parents, cool. Yes, my parents are oh, coming. My was, parents are a yes, little my, worried parents, there. Yeah, my parents are coming up. Uh, my sister and her husband and my nephew will be coming up, and my nephew is uh, probably more excited about seeing our two cats than he is uh, seeing either his <laughs> grandparents or his aunt and uncle. I can I can promise you that. Uh, we will fry a turkey, and uh, we will have macaroni and cheese, homemade macaroni and cheese. We will have stuffing. We'll have green bean casserole. Um, we'll have my wife wants pigs in a blanket. I, that's what she's put appetizer. down. Appetizer thing is, I guess. I'm not sure what type pigs in a blanket on the menu. That's an appetizer. I got to buy everything tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. Whatever else we make, some dessert somehow. I don't know. I, I haven't gone there yet. It's Tuesday. I'm in. I'm in a different city. I'll go home tomorrow and go to the grocery store and figure it out. I, I was more excited about the uh, the the knockoff Carbone spicy rigatoni that I made the other night with the uh, with, with some meatballs. That was put a little dollop of. Uh, fresh ricotta on there as well. That, that was that used to be my favorite part of Martirano in Vegas, and then oh, I, I went to go to Martirano in, in in Vegas in Paris, and it's gone. Like you get the meatball salad with with the, with the meatball on the salad and, and, and a scoop of ricotta. Like it was that was was heavy. the ricotta fresh? And, was the and, cheese fresh? Oh, it was very fresh, very fresh. See, you, you're, you're this is a joke going back to the previous pod, the college pod, where Sammy had the prosciutto. And I asked if he had fresh mozz, and he made a wise ass remark like, "What did you think? I scooped it out of the garbage or something?" Of course, it was fresh, but you know, fresh this the fresh mozz, and then there's like the sliced mozz. So I was asking if it was a legit chunk of fresh mozz from the from the ball, like a, not necessarily yeah. burrata, but a, a fresh mozz ball that was kind of already put on there, or if it was just like a just like a, a slice. So I get, I don't don't test my mozzarella knowledge, damn it. Insult me. It took you 45 I minutes to roll your remark. speeds up, and it wasn't until we started talking about mozzarella. Like, you see him, like, going for the buttons there? Like, he was ready to <laughs> roll the sleeves up? Uh, we are smoking a lamb this year on top of the turkey. Nice. Um, we also do, I don't think anybody in this uh, group has said cornbread yet. You got to have cornbread at the table. Homemade, too. Not like the Pillsbury cornbread. You got to do it from scratch. Sammy makes a good point because this is going to be my contribution. Nobody's going to come and knock on your door and arrest you if you cook something other than turkey. You could make a nice prime rib, a nice lamb. It doesn't have to be just turkey. I know there's, yes. you know, people say turkey's dry or whatever. I think if you took, it takes some skill, but if you cook turkey properly, it's very good, but it, it does need to be cooked a certain way, brined a certain way. But you can make a prime rib. You can make something else. There's no, like, there's, there's no rules to this. You can get a little, uh, a little inventive, a little creative. And by the way, don't don't let Will fool you there. I know he was talking about like Jeff and I have cooked. Will can get around the kitchen as well, and and so and, and so can Sammy. Sam, we we all we all kind of we all kind of know our food. We'll continue this conversation to let you know what we're going to cook around Christmas and over, over next month. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to afford all that food with some winners this week. Appreciate it, guys. Have a great week. So there's a a preview of our Thanksgiving spreads coming up. Uh, I, I'm still like trying to figure out the best way to play this. Uh, Seahawks no playoff thing that that will put in my head. Yeah, I couldn't find. I, I love that idea. Like, mm-hmm. like, do, do, do you just? Oh, I do play the Rams plus the four ninety. Yeah, they, they, I think that I think it's a good play. The Falcons yeah. could be that team as well. I don't think Ugh. it'll be the Packers. Gross. So maybe it just is taking the the Rams taking the, taking the one one eighty yeah. on on the straight no there, and, um, mm-hmm. and and doing it that way. Survivor is a interesting situation this week. Like, I'm assuming most people have used the Dolphins. I'm assuming most people have used the Cowboys. 
I'm assuming most people have used the chief. So like that, that, that kind of, it kind of takes the, I think the, there's the obvious I, games out of there. I think there's a chance if you want to get sneaky with it, to take the Titans against the Panthers, the Panthers are dead. Okay. Right now. Yes, they are. And the Titans are much better, but they're at home and the Panthers just stink. Like they're just, they're terrible Correct. right now. Their coaching staff might not survive this, uh, this year. Shouldn't. And I just think that the Panthers are a dead team to, and I just, I, Tennessee feels like a decent play. If you have them available, want a little bit of a little bit of a risk this week. I would think Frank Reich will be very happy to be fired and get out of that situation oh, yeah. he's a, he's a with the quarterback he doesn't want no. and no draft picks. That's what I would do. I'm I'm dead. We tried Washington last week, so we're it, both dead. The, the other one I want to throw at you would be Atlanta against New Orleans. Sure. Like that that would be that would be the one yeah. again. You, you're probably a, a week here where you make you have a whole bunch of not great options. I'm sure the Vikings on Monday night against the Bears might be tempting yeah. to some, but the Bears could score points. Sammy was talking about that as well. So I think the two best options, or or the the, yeah. the Patriots would be the other yeah. one. I know some people hate cool. laying points on the road or trusting yeah. money line on the road, but uh, yeah, Giants. Yeah, but a, but yeah, I, I think your yeah. Titans plays a good one. All right, let's recap the wagers Bears made before we get to best bets. You have Atlanta Falcons on the pick straight up against the Saints, and you have the Browns on the road getting two and a half points at the Broncos. Bear. Best bet of the week, buddy. Where are you going? I just mentioned the game. It's the New England Patriots laying three uh, against the Giants. I know Tommy DeVito played well. Uh, are they going to, but are the Giants going to benefit from six turnovers, including a pick six last week? Yeah. No. Patriots call me, call me skeptical. Patriots off a bye. Um, Sammy said they they got a zappy, zippy, yeah. zappity. Yeah. Cause it's, st- call, call, it's still one of the worst teams in the league. Yes. I know the Patriots are not good either. But I, I, I think you got it. two terrible teams. I do think the Patriots off the bye. Okay. I think defensively they'll play a little bit better than the Washington defense did last week. I am uh, I am taking the, uh, the New England Patriots minus three. I wish you the best of luck. I'm, I'm, I can't these. wait for this game, buddy. I wish you the best of luck here. Thank you, bud. Yeah, I wish you the luck. I'm not going against you, though, because I keep that's not good news whenever I do that. I'm going to a game uh, in, uh, in New York, the under for the Jets. And the Dolphins, 41 right now. Sometimes, and Will talked about this in the Gamble Group Chat, we overthink it sometimes. I'm not overthinking this. The Dolphins have played three really good defenses. Kansas City, 14 points. Philly, 17 points. And Buffalo, which is up and down, but they had Milano, and they, they, they were good mm-hmm. back when they played them, 20 points. right? They, they don't score as many points against defenses like the New York Jets. They're going to be on the road as well. The Jets are starting Boyle. T- Tim Boyle, is that we have? The, is that we got Correct. there? Tim Boyle. But is he worse um, than Zach Wilson? Uh, no, but then change what they do in offense. But more importantly, guys, Jalen Ramsey's been back for the last three weeks. Change the Dolphins' defense. They're allowing 17 points, 14 points, and 13 points. It's changed what they can be on defense. He's a, he's that type of player. We know he's that type of player. So the defense is getting better. It's a good Jets defense. Low-scoring game here, Bear. I'm taking the under 41. I'm not overthinking it. I, I I can certainly get there with him. I'm be curious to see what a Jets uh, team total might be in that game, too. Uh, it's not going to be very high. Just want to remind you guys, it's not too late to play the two free Fox Super 6 right. games. We have one for Thanksgiving specific. and one for Week 12. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 of weekly cash prizes. There will be again, as usual. Column columns up on uh, foxsports.com. Make sure you check out the uh, picks column as well, because obviously recording early in the week. So there's a very good chance, as there is every week of games yes, uh, being added to the picks column. So uh, if I fin- finally do- doing okay here in the NFL lately, too. So that's I'm happy about that. Only two points back now in my uh, I know. Friday football awesome. invitational at Circa as well. I love it. Looking to look at a repeat as champ. I was looked like I was down in the dumps for a while, but I love it, buddy. But we uh, we we had, we had a five and two week last week. The top of the board Sweet. didn't uh, didn't do so well. So we, we're in it. Nice. We're we're in it. Good for you. We're gonna go back to back. Hopefully, I didn't love just it. put the whammy on myself. So, hope everybody out there has a great Thanksgiving. Jeff, enjoy your uh, your fried oh, turkey. I would say save me a piece, but it'll probably be a little dry by the time I see you. Yeah. See you next week. So thanks everybody out there for uh, for listening, downloading, checking out our YouTube channel every single way that you uh, consume our podcast, Apple, Spotify, all the, the ways you can do it out there. For Sammy, for Will, Jeff, I'm Bear. Remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>